Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we have another review for you guys. It's a very unique keyboard. I guess we're on some kind of 60% mechanical keyboard review streak right now because we have a whole bunch more 60% coming our way. I know I'm not a big fan of them, but after doing all of these testings and reviews and whatnot, they're starting to grow on me. So today we have the Blitzwolf BW Dash KB1 60% mechanical keyboard. It's got 63 keys and that includes dedicated arrow keys. So right now it's about $50, but with the discount code on Banggood down below in the description box, read all of those things for how you can get your discounted price. It's about $42 right now, which is a really good price for this mechanical keyboard and we'll go on about why in just a little bit. So just a little bit of a preview. It's a 60%, it's got dedicated arrow keys, it's got Bluetooth and unlike other Bluetooth ones that we've reviewed, this one can connect up to five devices and switch between them extremely easily. Alongside this, it has ABS keycaps, but they're very textured and feel almost like PBT. It's Mac and Windows compatible, has RGB lighting, and the stabilizers are actually really impressive. So again, sound test at the end, like always, timestamps are in the description box below. If you wanna jump ahead, if you wanna jump back, whatever, you do you. Let's jump into the review. All right, so what's in the box? In the box, we have the keyboard itself. We also have a white braided USB-C cable. It's quite lengthy, it's braided, nothing to say beyond that. And then we have a wire keycap puller that looks pretty average like every other wire keycap puller that we've seen this year almost. And that's it. That's all that's in the box. There's of course is a warranty card and a manual. Other than that, it's very simple. Onto the keyboard itself in terms of build quality. I would say the case design is probably one of the cleanest looking designs that I've ever seen on a 60% mechanical keyboard. It reminds me a lot of the Razer Huntsman Mini and how that overall design looks, except when you look at the aluminum plate at the top, it is flush with the plastic casing on the outside. It doesn't sit beyond it. It doesn't sit like under it. It's just very clean and very straight. So the case is all plastic on the bottom and on the sides. However, the top plate is an aluminum mounting plate for the switches. In the back, we see that it has single angle adjustable kickstands. They do have rubber feet on them and the rubber pads slide off quite easily, which can be a disadvantage because you might just lose some of these rubber feet and then maybe your keyboard will slide away, but it's not an easy thing to lose. On the back, you also have the on and off switch because it is a Bluetooth mechanical keyboard. It does have a battery inside it that you need to turn on or leave off. And in terms of rubber feet, this keyboard probably has the largest number of rubber feet I've ever seen on a mechanical keyboard. And that is six different rubber feet and then plus two more for the kickstand. So that's eight in total. There's two at the top next to the feet, there's two at the bottom, and then there's an additional two on the bottom again. So pretty amazing. Definitely not a slip and slide at all. Don't you worry about this thing moving around when you're button mashing like crazy because you're panicking and not sure what to do, which is something that I do. And then if you look at the side, it does have a very nice typing angle or a natural angle. But if you want a steeper angle, it does have that single angle adjustable kickstand on the back. It has floating keycaps. They're OEM ABS double shot keycaps. We'll talk more about the keycaps later on, but from the side, you can see that it's very flush with the keyboard itself. And I'm just amazed, impressed, in love with the design. I'm not usually a fan of floating keycaps, but in this case, I think it looks really good. And then on the front of the case, you can see that there's branding that's pretty subtle. It's pretty decent looking. It's sort of cool, I could say except I'm not sure why the I is lowercase and that might be the least cool thing about this. But I'm sure a little bit of goo gone or something will get rid of that. And then on the back, we have the USB-C port, which is, sits very flush with the case as well. And with a flush port like this comes 
all of the options when it comes to custom USB-C cables. It's very easy to find something that just plugs right in. You don't have to worry about recess ports. You don't have to worry about different indentations that need to fit in their correct place. So at the end, we'll look over a really cool USB-C cable that I've been using recently and it's very different and unique from other ones, but you can always just use a cable that comes with as well. So the case is textured. It feels almost chalky. It's plastic except it's ABS plastic, except it feels like PVT plastic. I like the texture. It's not glossy at all. It doesn't really reflect light in the same way as other cases do. It's nice. And then the keycaps. So the keycaps are double shot ABS plastic. They allow the light to shine through. The legends are pretty much what we see on most mechanical keyboards that are at this price. We've been seeing this font very often. Uh, the first wave of HyperX PPT keycaps had these, had this font for their legends. It's not bad. Most of the letters aren't bad at all. It's just the separations in the closed letters like O, B, M, not M, O, B, Q, and then the symbols on the number row, just things like that that can really turn you off to a keyboard and their fonts. And then because there's dedicated arrow keys, that means you also have a small right shift. And what that means is that you sort of need to find specialized keycap sets for it that will fit alternate layouts. Despite it being a 60%, it fits the keycap sets of 65% because of that right shift. And then because of the small 1U keys on the right hand corner as well. And another thing about the layout, which took me a while to get used to, is how far the question mark and the forward slash is from where it usually is. So because they had to make room to fit that arrow cluster, they moved the question mark and forward slash from its original place to almost three keys more to the right. And then they had to fit that shift there. Takes a while to get used to. I guess it's beneficial because now you can access the question mark using just one hand, but it's really weird. It's hard to get used to. If you're just gaming on this, then I would say go for it. But if you're doing any typing, publishing, writing, stories, homework, whatever, that question mark could take some time to get used to. I find myself pressing the shift quite often when I'm reaching for the question mark and wondering why is it not working? And then the key apps themselves are ABS, but these hops feel a little bit textured. So it's similar to PBT, but I expect that over time, this will still start to shine much sooner than PBT keycaps would. However, the texture makes it seem like it would be a little bit more oil resistant at first. So I've typed on it quite a bit. And so far there's nothing that feels grimy or slippery on it at all, which I think is really good for keycaps of this material. The width of each keycap wall is about one millimeter it's thicker than most abs keycaps but thinner than most pbt keycaps that we've worked with the sub legends are side printed which is very convenient because then we're not cluttering the tops of the keycaps and then we're also not subjecting more of these printed legends to rub off when we're using the keyboard because you don't ever touch the sides of your keycaps anyways and with the keycap puller being a wired one you're not likely to scratch the keycaps I'm not the hugest fan of the keycaps, but I do think that they're not the worst that I've seen either. They are thick, they don't flex. The legends are not my thing, but they feel nice and textured. And then the stabilizers is probably one of my favorite things about this keyboard is that the stabilizers have no rattle. They have no extra sounds. They're just clean sounds, clean noises from just the switches. Feels very good. They're cherry style. They are plate mounted and they are not lube from the factory at all, but they do have a nice sock to them, which is actually really impressive. You can lube these really easily without desoldering um, by using an interdental brush. And if you're interested in that, we have a whole guide that I'll link down below as well. In terms of the switches, they are 
Gateron Red. However, you can get this in Gateron Blue or Brown as well. They're very smooth switches. Of course, they'll be even smoother if they were lubed, but stock, they sound great because if the case design and the keycaps and whatnot, I hear very little spring noise when I'm using this with the keyboard on my desk. The only times when I do hear the spring noise is if I put the keyboard really close to my face and then start pounding out on a key and then I can hear it, which is actually really good for some stock switches. So RGB effects, there are a bunch and I'm gonna show it to you right now. As for Bluetooth, it is 5.0, which is pretty updated. It's very recent, connects very quickly. It's really easy to connect. All you do is flip the switch on and then you hold FN and either Q, W, E, R, or T because it, it can connect with up to five devices. And then after that, you go on your computer and you just find the device and connect and boom, you're done. It does sleep really quickly, really often, and when it sleeps, the RGB lights turn off. But if you press a key, it'll restart again really quickly and connect that way. I'm not sure how to turn the auto sleep off. I guess it's trying to save battery life. And as for the battery, it is 1900 milliampere hours. They say it's only gonna last one day with the RGB lights on and up to 10 days with the lights off. Compared to a lot of other keyboards, that's not a very long time and the battery is actually quite small too. It is compatible with Windows and Mac, but with Mac, I haven't really tested it and I'm not really sure what the function road does. It does have software and I did download it, but when I came to install the software, it was in Chinese, like the directions were in Chinese. So I was like, mm, I'm not really sure what I'm installing here. So I didn't really get the chance to play around with it or test it, but I know that it lets you do key remapping, it lets you edit the colors, and it lets you record macros and put macros into your keys as well. But like I said, I didn't get the chance to install it. So, I can't say much about that. But for the price of $42, I think this is a really good keyboard. I've never seen another Bluetooth keyboard that can connect with five devices. Now, I don't even have that many devices to connect to, but if you travel with your laptop, have your PC at home, connect it to your tablet, use it at work, things like that, I can see how having five different connectivity options is really convenient. It's different, it's unique, but I really think the best things about this keyboard are in one, the design, the flush design with the floating keycaps, and two, the stabilizers are really good, especially for the price of $42. And now it's time for what you've been waiting for. It's typing test time, take it away.
All right, that was the typing test. As you heard, those modifiers with the stabilizers are extra clean, love it. No spring noise, switches are smooth, great sound overall. And for this price, I think it's worth it. I recommend it. I like using it. The only downside and the only reason why I can't make it my daily driver is because of that question mark location. I just use question mark so much. I'm not sure why I must ask a lot of questions or something, but I use it, but I use it a lot and I just can't get used to it. The dedicated arrows are very cool, but for me, for myself, I'd rather just get a 65% mechanical keyboard and have the normal layout with the arrow keys and then some additional navigational keys on the side. I think that's really ideal for me, but if you're looking for that really compact 60% footprint without that additional extra row on the right side and you can't sacrifice the arrow keys yet, you do a lot of gaming, but you don't type question mark too much, this is a really good option for you. Again, links are down below in the description as to where to buy it and the coupon codes and all that. Also for a really, really fast, really cool looking USB-C cable that will fit this keyboard, charge it real quickly and look cool while doing it. We have with us a Vivify USB-C cable that's fast charging. It connects perfectly into the flush port. However, one downside is that it's a little short. It's great for using it with your laptop because with a laptop, you don't want too long of a cable. But I'll show you guys what this looks like right now. It's really awesome. It glows in red. They also have a green and a blue option that we got to try out as well. Charges things super quickly. Looks really cool, especially at night or in dim lighting but I recommend checking this out. Links are down below as well if you're interested. I hope you like this. I'm gonna link you guys to all of our 60% mechanical keyboard reviews because there's actually a lot now right here. And then to a video on the five mods to make your keyboard sound and feel better right here and subscribe here if you want to. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.